Ugh, that looks terrible. <sighs> Hi everyone, my name is Lisa and this is my intercultural journey. Just like my handwriting and artistic skills, it's a work in progress, but I hope you enjoy learning about my process growing and developing as a cultural being. I was born on March 1st, 1994 in Taiwan in a city called Taichung, which is close to the center of this island nation. Taiwan has an interesting history as it had been colonized by the Netherlands, Spain, China, and Japan. It's also home to various tribes of indigenous people who each have their own unique language and culture. While the vast majority of Taiwanese people have Chinese ancestral roots, including myself, there are some people who have European blood and many are part indigenous. While Mandarin Chinese is the official language and I grew up speaking Mandarin, many people also speak Taiwanese or Hokkien, which is a dialect from the Fujian province in China. Taiwan was colonized by Japan before World War II and continues to be heavily influenced by Japanese culture today. My parents and grandparents on both sides are fluent in both Mandarin and Taiwanese, and while I am fluent in Mandarin and can understand Taiwanese, I can't speak it. Let's talk about my family. There's my dad, my mom, and two older sisters who are eight and six years older than me, respectively. Of course, as my family, they are formative to my growth as a cultural being. Early exposure to different cultures contributed to my openness and curiosity towards different languages and people throughout my life. Growing up, my parents knew a lot of American Christian missionaries. In fact, my English name was given to me by one of these Christian missionaries. My parents modeled to me an openness towards people from different countries. Since my paternal grandmother was heavily affected by Japanese culture and her Japanese friends, she taught me Japanese songs and dance when I was little. I don't remember any of it, of course, and was probably too young to understand cultural differences, but my family and I welcomed it. When I was three, my family moved to live in Boston, Massachusetts for just one year. That was my first time living in a foreign country and the beginning of my understanding of difference. Apparently, at the end of my first day of preschool, when my mom came to pick me up, I bursted into tears. Why? Turns out I was complaining about my hair being dirty, not because it was covered in dirt or I hadn't washed my hair, but because in contrast to my classmates who had blonde or lighter colored hair, my pitch black hair seemed dirty while their hair seemed cleaner or perhaps more beautiful. I laugh at it now, but looking back, I think it was my childish way of making sense of difference, self-recognition, and self-understanding. I had limited understanding of myself and of others, and also a limited vocabulary to express my thoughts, thus associating things over simplistically. Faced with culture shock, the language barrier, and a foreign environment, the only response I had as a child was to cry. While I lacked the sophisticated self-recognition and language to think critically about my own identity in relation to American culture, as a child I was so innocent and soaked up everything like a sponge. Thankfully, I adjusted quickly and soon made friends of different races, ethnicities, and it was probably easy to make all kinds of friends my age despite knowing barely any English. I enjoyed preschool so much that when my family decided to take vacations to travel elsewhere, I would be sad about having to miss preschool. It was a good year where I experienced my first Halloween, my first snow, and American culture. After a year, I moved back to Taiwan to attend regular public elementary school. Being part of a Taiwanese education system was demanding. We had monthly tests and midterms and finals as elementary school kids, and we would be ranked according to our score. Wanting to shine and stand out among my peers, I started to become a more competitive and involved kid. As a first grader, I volunteered myself as a candidate for class leader and was democratically elected by my peers. I did fairly well in sports, especially short distance running. I spoke up a lot and went to school-wide and even city-wide speech competitions. I was part of a quarter ensemble and went to competitions for those too. Yes, it's a real thing. Several times I was nominated by my teachers to represent the class as a model student, and I even got to meet the mayor at one point. As others had high expectations of me, I also started having high expectations of myself, sometimes in an unhealthy way. I remember withholding recess for myself whenever I got a bad grade and exhibiting some self-punishing behavior that, to me now, is quite alarming. Looking back, being under the public education system in Taiwan forced me to be more competitive, interested in developing myself through academics and extracurriculars. These are traits that still remain in me today. Moreover, I started to become interested in a career in teaching, and my parents and teachers started to see talent and potential in me to become a teacher. 
Unlike most Taiwanese kids, I also attended an English cram school taught by foreign teachers after regular school. There, not only did I learn English, but I also learned some French and Spanish. I remember that before snack time, we would have to ask in unison in three languages, English, French, and Spanish, whether we can start eating, and our teachers would respond in three languages. Essentially, every day, I would be exposed to five languages, Chinese, Taiwanese, English, French, and Spanish. I came to embrace linguistic diversity and coexistence in the same space.